Okay, so we're back in Google, um, sorry, not Google Sites, we're back in Canvas, and uh, and basically it's now time for your favorite thing, grading. Um, so here we go. So there's a couple different ways to grade. Okay, so let's say the first way is to go into, um, let's say we go into an assignment. Um, we can grade from the assignment. Okay, so basically let's say that uh, we go into the assignment here. So we go, you know, we can start from the modules page or the home page, right? If we've been keeping track, if we've been putting up a, you know, a list of assignments and due dates, we can go to that and click on the link we put in, right? Or we can go to the modules page and we can click on the assignment that is, you know, been published for the students. And once we get to the assignments page, we can do a couple of different things and I'll tell you why they are useful. So the first thing we can use is speed grader. Okay, so if we click on speed grader, it opens up in another new tab. So this is your bread and butter grading. Okay, so so in this case, the student has uploaded <laughs> this. This test student has uploaded loaded this. Um, you can give a comment. You know, um, this is not a summary of of um, great expectations. Okay, that's a zero. All right, this is not a summary of great expectations. So you can give a comment, right? You can give a grade out of 20 or you know whatever you put in for the points for the assignment. Um, uh, also, you can see that the student can have multiple submissions. So you can check here, you know, this is common where a student will upload different stuff. You know, say if they're allowed to turn it in a second time, they might upload a different um, uh, version of it, okay? Um, so if it can give a preview, this is why you'd want to restrict the uploads also. You know, if you have PDFs, um, Google Sites will actually show up in here. The, the link that, any link that they give, it will try to load that link in here. Um, but basically all you're going to do is uh, you can just progress through the students uh, by clicking this right button. It automatically saves. So as you're entering this data, if you just click next, it will automatically save. There's only one student in this course because it was our test course. If you do this drop down, there will be multiple student names here. You would be able to see who you had graded as well as who you turned in. Another very useful thing here is that you have multiple sections. So for example, if we have section, you know, period one and period two, remember how if we added sections and then we assigned the students to those sections, this is a case where those sections are now very useful because we can just click on, you know, we can only see the students from sec the section name period one or only from the section name period two. Okay, and we can just progress through and look at the work and assign a grade. So this is basically where all the grading gets done. Um, okay, uh, I think that is it on this one. Okay, the other thing that we can do, so this is speed grader. Okay, very, very, very useful. Um, the other thing that we can do that's very useful for plagiarism is basically as download submissions. Okay, so if we click download submissions, what it's going to do is it's going to zip all of the student files together, okay? Uh, and then what we can do, I'll just tell you what's useful for me on this, is if we take, if we go to downloads, right? So here we have, um, let me just delete everything so we can. Okay. So, Okay, so we have submissions. If we right click on submissions, we go to extract all. This is on Windows. And basically we just extract the, the folder. Then we delete the zip file. Okay, so on your Windows computer, this won't say zip. It will just have a zipper on it, um, probably. Okay, so click right click and click delete. Okay, now we just have our folder. That's our real actual folder that we've unzipped. If we open this now, we can see all the folder, all the files. Okay, now where, why is this useful? Okay, so well, one, you can just, you know, if it's say it's something that you can't view inside of, uh, inside of the speed grader, um, you know, then you can bring it down, unzip it all at once. Um, notice that you lose, um, so notice that we have student test here. So notice that the file names are, are uh, appended um, or prepended. Uh, if I click right click view and then details, notice that the file names are prepended with the student name. What's really useful here though is the file size. Okay, so if you download the folder, right, and you 
sort by file size, then likely any file that has been duplicated or is uh, a uh, you know been plagiarized in some way will probably come up as the same file size. Okay, that's a good place to start. Um, in addition, you might be able to see a file preview, um, something like that. Okay, so the, so the download submissions is, is useful, uh, especially if it's something that you can't see in the browser or for some reason you wanna get all the submissions at one time and save them as files. Okay. The other place where we can grade, so SpeedGrader is the main place that you would grade. The other place that we can grade is in grades, actually. Okay, so we click on grades. Here we have our grade book. Okay, and there's a couple ways to make this more useful. Okay, notice that it defaults to having all of your assignments, all right? And it defaults to being the view being by date. Okay, now if you don't have date, then it defaults to some other mechanism. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go to view and we want to arrange by module first to last. Okay, so since we're since we're using modules so heavily, we're like exclusively using modules, we want to view our grade grade book by module. Okay. Um, that will make it more easy. If you're using due dates, you might want to arrange by due date. Okay due date, uh, oldest to newest, right? Something like that. Okay, but if you're not using dates, then probably you want it modules first to last. And then also we want to not view unpublished assignments. Okay, all right, now this is a live gradebook. Uh, in, a cut, in, one, in a couple ways, not so live in other ways. Okay, so, so one thing that will happen is, is that if you put in a grade and then a student subsequently turns in that assignment, this, this, uh, this cell will change colors, okay? You can change the grade in here, it's editable, okay? Um, also something that is very helpful for me, depending on the size of it, you can change the zoom, okay? So if you have a, a roller mouse, you can hold down control and just roll in or roll out, okay? And that, that can allow you to change the uh, zoom of the, of, the, um, of the page. In Chrome here, uh, we can click zoom and then we can just go back, to, whoops. That wasn't it. We can just go back to 100%. We can also just do control zero to reset it to 100%. Okay, uh, so basically that's it. You know, and this will just be columns of assignments. It's very quick to go in and change a grade or see how a particular student is doing. Um, this, is, this is also uh, a word of caution on grading, okay? Uh, you, because this is free Canvas, right? So basically this is Canvas for you as a teacher. You do not have access to the student accounts, right? Uh, you can't reset their passwords. Basically they create an account and then that's it, all right? Now, you really need to impress upon your students that they must put in their real, real name and that name must be first name space last name, okay? If they have three names, tell them not to put in their middle name, okay? So if it's, uh, you know, basically what, what I'm saying is that if the student puts in the wrong name, this student list is always going to be in alphabetical order. If the student puts in the wrong name, you will forever for the entire year have, you know, um, you know, if Alex Zimmerman puts in, <laughs> puts in just Alex, Alex Zimmerman is gonna appear at the top of your list, not the bottom. And you will forever be trying to figure out where Alex is when you try to transfer these grades over to your grading system. So when the students put in their names, if, if they're self signing up for the, for, the, for the class, it is really important that, that you double check and really impress upon them that they need to put in their names correctly because those names are going directly into your grade book. And then basically you can't change them once it's done. Also, the problem, another problem that you're going to have is that students forget their accounts. So if they're, if they're managing their own accounts, uh, when they first come in, they need to set their email address so they can recoup their password. Uh, and then, um, yeah, and then what you're going to get in your grade book is a lot of duplicate names, okay? So you're gonna get a, you know, a student that forgets his name every day. Uh, and then makes a new account every day for a while until they get the hang of it. Okay, so so when you come in here, uh, be ready for that. You know, you're going to have to do some scrubbing of, of student accounts. Um, so that you'll notice it here in Gradebook. Uh, and then basically what you'll need to do is you'll need to go back out uh, into the uh, people area. Okay, so say a student's making a lot of duplicate accounts. Basically, you'll need to go into people. 
um, you'll need to figure out. It's really easy to find it because you can see this last activity here. The inactive account will be like, uh, you know, will not have been logged into for a while. But what you might get is you might get a student who has turned some stuff in under one account and then stuff in under another account uh, like that. So, um, so just be aware of that. Uh, and, and, you know, um, the more training you can give students up front, the, the, more, the less of a headache it will be later on. So, uh, so best of luck with that. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. So that, that pretty much covers grading. Um, there are, you know, in theory, should this be able to go directly into your gradebook software? Yeah. You know, it probably should. Um, the more you can keep this accurate, you know, the more you can keep it, um, you know, cr give the correct number of points to assignments, you know, the more you can keep it correct, you know, by publishing assignments, and uh, even using due dates, uh, the more this grades will be will be uh, accurate and not confusing to students. Um, so if you're going to use it um, as a grading system, it will show them their grades. So uh, so um, so just be aware of that and try to keep it as as non confusing as possible for them. Okay, those are all my opinions and how to use the grading. So uh, so best of luck.